Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to change this simple set of data from LinkedIn into a sleek looking dashboard like this in Power BI. All with the help of just six simple yet powerful DAX formula that you can use again and again. If you want to see this along with a few other tricks that can take your dash to the next level, stay tuned and I'll walk you through it. So you or your company may have a corporate LinkedIn or Twitter account or website. These are all recording key data which you or your company may be interested in. Things like views, followers, engagement, impressions, etc. Although these sites often have built-in analysis, you may wish to extract the data and create dashboards for internal reporting. If so, you're able to extract data such as this simple sample showing posts, impressions, visits, and followers on a monthly basis. I can show you how to turn this simple data into a professional looking dashboard that you can customize to your own needs using just a few simple yet powerful DAX formula. So step one is to import your data set into Power BI, which is fairly straightforward. Step two is to create the totals formula. So if we look at this, we're going to create LinkedIn total new followers, which equals to sum X. We'll use sum X here. And we have to call out a table. So we call out our LinkedIn data table. And then we're going to use the column, which is LinkedIn new followers. And that, it's as simple as that for step number two, which is our first formula. So step number three, which is our second formula, is creating a year to date. So we'll call this LinkedIn new followers YTD for year to date equals, we're going to use a total YTD here, which is a specific formula for this. So we have to use an expression, which is going to be our, all our new followers. So the calculation that we created previously, and we comma, and we use the dates. So we're just going to use our LinkedIn data dates. Again, it's as simple as that for that. Next, we're going to move on to step four, which is the number of followers for our current month. So LinkedIn new followers for this month. So we're going to use a calculate formula here. So our expression is our total new followers again, the first calculation that we created. And then again, we're going to use this last date. So it's going to take the latest date, which is the current month in our um, file. Again, fairly straightforward and simple. So that's another one ticked off. We move on then to step five, which is our previous month. So last month's um, new followers. So LinkedIn followers for the previous month. We'll get there. So it's calculate again. And we'll use the same. We'll, use, well, this time we'll, we'll try something different. We'll put in the sum of our new followers, which is kind of what we already had previously, but we'll just mix it up here. And then we're going to use a previous month function here. So it's going to take the previous month. So it's the second last month on our data set. Again, nothing too stressful there. Next is step stick six, which is the month over month difference. So this is linked in followers, difference month over month. So for this one, we're going to use variables. So our first variable is the current uh, month, which is the sum of our new LinkedIn followers. We'll pick the right one here, um, and then our previous month, which we're going to have a variable called previous s, is equal to our LinkedIn followers previous month. That was one of our previous calculations or expressions. And then we're going to have a variable of the current minus the previous. So that's basically our difference or result. So a variable result is the current S minus previous S. 
and then we want to return our result. And that's pretty much us for step six. So we're then we're going to move on to our final uh, step, which is the month over month percentage growth. So our growth percentage is just going to be a divide calculation. So we're going to go divide. You type in here our difference in months, and that's going to be divided by our previous month. And that's just going to give us our percentage difference. What I like to do here is test the formulas I've created in a matrix just to see that we're getting the right answers and there's no form or no errors in there. Usually we just drop in a date. So I'll just make sure we have the correct format for our dates. And then we're going to drop in our total followers. So it's in total 696. And then our year to the year to date. So that's the cumulative total of our month each month. Then we're going to drop in this month. So that should equal our total new followers should be the same value. Then we're going to look at the previous month, so they should be equal to the month just above. And then we're going to look at the difference month over month. And then also we have our percentage. So I'll just pull a couple of these columns in. And I forgot to format that per the percentage, so we'll change that to percentage and we'll just make it one decimal place. So just having a quick look, it all looks Pretty good. So I have a housekeeping tip that I use regularly. So I create a measures table. What I like to do is to pull all my measures into the table so I can select them and drag them down to the measures table. I do this in the model setting because it's easier then. And what you can do is then you can group these together under one sort of subfolder. So in the display folder, we'll rename this as LinkedIn. If I hit return, if I go back into uh, the workspace, I'll see now all of my calculations are in, or all my measures are under a single folder in the measures table. So just a quick recap, if I look back, we've created these six uh, measures. So we've got the followers year to date, we've got this month's previous months, we've got the percentage growth, we've got the difference month over month. So that's just to show you all the um, measures that we've created. And what we're going to use is we're going to apply, we've applied that to new followers. So we're going to do the same. What we can do is copy and basically copy and paste these formulas and put it for visits, impressions, etc. So we want to apply it to all our columns. So what I've done here, I've gone ahead and rather than go through everything and copy and paste, I've done copy and pasted those formulas for each of our columns. So here we have it for posts we'll see um or sorry for the month over month growth percentages so for each column it's basically the same formula for the measure just changing out the column names so now we have a full set of metrics we can start the dashboard so first i want to set by setting the the background so i created a background just in powerpoint a simple um, black top um, with a logo at the top so we add that in, make a fit and create the transparency as 0% so we can see it. So now what we want to do is insert an image. So I insert a LinkedIn image. So we stick this in the top corner just so we know what we're looking at. So we have that LinkedIn at the top. Next, we want to create a title. So we'll set this to 32. I'll just give it a generic name, my comp LinkedIn interactions you can change this to whatever you want uh, as i say this is just a generic name just for the purpose of this so we'll stick this up in the header where we had where i've made space for it um, we'll drop it in here and we'll change the background to no background or transparent um, and then we want to change the text to white here just so it pops up from the background hopefully that works not Okay, so that's that. Next, we want to add something in here to, so we know what month it's used for. So this is just a bonus auto date. So what I've done is created a date. 
So this is the latest date is equal to the last date from your LinkedIn data. So this will be your current month, so to speak. So if we drop that into a card and just reformat that card so it has the same attributes as your title, we can pop that up just beside our title. And then for each month, um, when you update your data, if you create a next month, we have November 2012 or 2021, sorry, when we drop that data in, then this will automatically update. You'll, you'll not be required to then go and fix the dates for your reports. So that's sort of a useful um, sort of tip that we can use here. Next, we want to add our cards and KPIs. So what we're doing is we're going to do it for followers here. So I'm going to create a set of cards. So I'm going to use our year to date, new followers, and then also our current month. Um, and then I want a KPI showing our percentage month over month growth. So I'm going to drop in our date <coughs> to give us our axes. I'm going to just drop in, this is a zero. So it just gives me if, if anything's above zero, it's a positive. If it's, if it's below zero, it's a negative. So now we're just going to look at customizing this slightly. So we're just going to take off some of the detail that we don't want. And then I'm going to position this where I want. So just a couple of X, Y positions and sizes and widths just to get it in the space that I want. So I'll move these over to the left top hand corner. Yep. So we'll fix these up. And so what we want to do is maybe create a custom background and border and maybe a title in here. So let's get these fixed up. So once they're up, let's change. We can group because these are two cards. We can do them at the same time. So that's a quick tip as well. You can select multiple of the same and just apply the same formatting. And the good thing about this is we do it for one set. And then what we can do is you can basically copy and paste for all your other um, data in the column in the columns that you have. So you'll see that in, in a minute or two when we get to it. So just adding the titles in here. So the first one was followers year to date. This is not going to be followers month to date. And then we're just going to have our month over month growth. So month over month change, sorry. Um, let me set the... So that's one set. We'll now just change the background colors. So the background, I'm going to use a color that I like to use, which is 66176212. And then I'm going to set the transparency to 50% here. So it's just give me a light blue fill. Um, and then I'm going to just do like a grayish border here with a, <coughs> a curve on it on the outside. We'll do the same here. So we've got a radius of five. So that's our first set done. Now I want to bring in a chart or a graph here. So we're going to bring in just a waterfall chart. This may not be wholly practical for this one, but it's just the, something that we can use. So this will give us the steps in new followers that we had month over month and then the total at the end, which is basically the year to date. So I'm just going to set the position here. And we're going to set a couple of colors. So we'll, set, we'll change that to our color that we're using, that bluish color. <coughs> and then our total color, I'll use a sort of darkish gray. We want to change the data labels and turn them on, resize it to it. And we'll turn the title off. So what we, and we want to do now we've got that we can copy and paste these values or these um, cards and KPIs and drop them down is what we want to do. So this is this is a good um, tip. We can do this and then just modify our position. And then we can just swap out the measures. So this is something that we can do for all of um, the measures we have. We can create <clears throat> one set for followers 
um, one for posts, one for visit visits, etc. So there we can now I just start swapping out. So we'll swap out our followers for posts. So we just need to swap out the numbers and then we can just change the titles. So that's done. We can create a graph, similar type graph. We drop in our total link in posts and we create a line as well of their month over month percentage growth. We'll put the dates in. And we just want to modify the location so it's sort of in line with the one above. Do a little bit more adjustment. So here's what we can do. There's a little tip. We can change the name of the measures just by double clicking on top. And then that is reflected in your legend. So that's a quick tip. It's a good one because sometimes your measures have got very long names and you want to shorten them down. So that's a good one for just adjusting them. We change our date to categorical. That will give us each month rather than skipping months. And we want to turn off the title and we want to show the secondary axis so we get the percentage month over month growth. And we want to change our color so it um, aligns with what we have above. So we have um, common colors that we're using. Uh, <clears throat> we want to change the, if we want to change the line style, do a dash and put in some um, markers as well. We can do that. We want to put in the values. That looks a bit too clustered there. So we want to turn off some one set of our, um, so we'll turn off the month for month growth percentage. We'll just keep the number of posts, but we'll pop that just above. So we don't have that background that sits in there. Once you've done it for two, then it's pretty easy. You just copy and paste and you can add it for the impressions and visits. So you get pretty much a similar layout of having a couple of cards and a KPI um, for your impressions and profile visits year to date, month to date, month over month changes. And you can have line graphs, bar charts, etc., etc. If you want to add a bit more to it, you can add in these icons. You can get free icons at icons8.com and you can just add them in similar in a similar way to add it to the LinkedIn icon. Um, adding the icons just gives it that extra touch, I think. Um, lets people know kind of what they're looking at. What we can do next is we can add other accounts from like your Twitter or your website. So here um, you can have data sets from your Twitter mentions, followers, etc. Same for your website. You can have visitors, engagement, etc. And you can basically copy the formulas that you had for LinkedIn and have similar measures um, for Twitter and for your website. So you'll see there I've got followers on LinkedIn and Twitter. You're basically using the same set of measures. So it's the same six measures almost across the board. And you can use those um, to basically create an almost infinite number of measures against all of these. And you can use that to create three different dashboards. So you can have one for Twitter here. So we've got one for followers, tweets, impressions, mentions, etc. So there we have all our measures set up. There's a link in the description below to my blog, which has a list of all the measures. Um, that I've created so you can go in there and copy those out if you need them. Well, that's it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any comments, leave them below. Any ideas, give me some feedback. I'm happy to hear it. If you want to subscribe, go ahead. And if you want to see more of this, just let me know. Thank you. Till next time. See you later.